In this video, I'm going to show you how the first set statistics that I'm teaching are really useful and just I had this wonderful question two weeks ago while I was teaching by a student. He came to me and basically was questioning what I was saying. And that was the most beautiful thing and amazing thing that I could expect because that's exactly what I'm teaching to them. Question everything. So the fact that they were questioning what I was saying in the validity of my examples were just a proof that they, they properly listened and that was really great. But now I have of course to answer properly to this critique, if we can say, or question, challenge. And basically the, the, the main point of the student was about, I was showing scientific research and sometimes just taking examples and saying, okay, you see this published article in peer-reviewed uh, journal, but you can really question the results and what's written. And he was really a bit surprised, like, can we really do that? I mean, uh, uh, but the scientific researcher behind, maybe they have already thought about all that and have very good answers and so on and so forth. Well, I took two new examples to show you how you can use the first aid kits that I'm teaching and question even articles published in peer-reviewed journals. Let's do that together. So we are going to look at two examples that I have discovered while teaching in the class of uh, uh, my colleague, Professor Jörg Dietz, who is teaching to master in management students at HEC Lausanne, uh, causality and evidence-based management. A really key class and he's doing a fantastic job. So we are happy to use those two very interesting examples he took. So the two articles are related to a question he received in class uh, about if the seating positions, if you are closer to the professor or at the, behind in the class, if you will learn better or not during class. So here is the first article. So it's published in PLOS One, which is a, a very decent journal, and it's called The Impact of Classroom Seating Location and Computer Use on Student Academic Performance. And basically the key thing here, because you, you can do research that, that's not causal, do not show a causal effect. But the thing is, if it's not the case and you claim causality, that's, that's when it's really problematic, right? So let's see what they claim. Basically, you can read the full article and abstract. Basically, at some point, they say, okay, in agreement with previous research, we found that sitting further from the instructor negatively impacted. It's not written that it's negatively associated, because that will not be an issue. You can talk about an association. It's very useful, but you don't claim causality. Here, it's neg negatively impacted. The word is, is very important, meaning that it's the fact that you are further back in the class will impact student grades. Okay. But how did they do that? Very quickly, it's not an experiment. It's not a randomized control trial where basically students will randomly uh, be allocated to different places. It's rather they just answer where they are seated in the classroom. And the thing is, and you all know that, I'm sure, if you are just not <laughs> seated, uh, if you are seated at the back of the room, there are many confounding factors. There are other things. That's one of the key elements I teach. It's always ask if there is something else explaining this effect. And of course, here, there are tons of things. When I was sitting at the back of the class, maybe I just wanted to leave early. I wanted to chat with my friends. I wanted to look at something else, work on an other uh, uh, assignments, or, or just do whatever. Well, when I was going to sit in front, that was really the class I was fascinated about. I didn't want to speak with anyone. I just wanted to listen to the professor. So, of course, there are many things that will explain this. So, this tool, when you ask, is there something else, is really key. And here is a good example where you can see that you just ask this question and you can clearly challenge the results of a peer-reviewed article in a decent journal. Let's see now an, a, a second example. So basically, you have this uh, very nice paper, which is, do students learn better when seated close to the teacher? And here, they use a different setup. So again, here, they reclaim causality. But the thing is, in this situation, what they do is that they use a virtual classroom. So they use virtual reality 
to it puts people in classroom and randomly assign them in different places. And here, virtual reality is, is wonderful because basically it allows to have exactly the same setup. Everything is the same, number of students, things that could distract you. It's exactly the same setup. So no differences between uh, the place of students or the thing that might affect. So it reduces the risk that there is something else explaining these effects. And above that, they are randomly assigned to different places. So the fact that they are in front or in the back is not their own decision, their own choice. So, so it, it will really allow to reveal the causal impact. But there's a catch, right? And I think here it leads to, to another tool that I'm teaching. Always ask about what we call technically external validity, but uh, can we extrapolate? And the thing is, here, if you are in a virtual classroom doing an experiment with your VR uh, glasses, not sure how, how it's called, can you really extrapolate or use those results to say something about what happened in a real class? Well, to some extent, I guess, but not perfectly, and I'm sure there are many limitations. And that's something, again, that is absolutely clear. A very simple question that you can ask to challenge, again, scientific research. Which it, it, it's just, can we extrapolate? And everybody could do that. And that's something that happens a lot. Usually, you have this tension between you want something that's internally valid, to, so to, to observe perfectly a causal effect, but sometimes, as you go closer to this parallel world situation to observe a causal effect, to have the perfect contra contrafactual, well, you tend to, to lose external validity, the, the capacity to extrapolate because you, you end up in a very specific setup. It's the same with, with in vivo researchers. So I'm teaching to, to them statistics tomorrow. And often, what they will do to, to have this kind of get as close as possible to the parallel world situation, to get uh, uh, a proper causal effect, they will use inbred strains of rats, so rats that are almost identical genetically. The thing is, they are so similar, it's very hard then to say something about other uh, uh, type of other uh, rats, other animals, or even humans. So to wrap up, this is, those are two key examples of how those tools are absolutely necessary to know. So is there something else? Can we extrapolate? And indeed, you can apply that even to published paper in peer-reviewed journals and find that there might be some limitations to the conclusions that are presented in those papers. I hope it was useful. Feel free to share any other examples or if you have questions in the comments below. Thanks for sharing the time with me and all the best.